G'day Art Snackers, my name is James of James Luke Burke Creative and welcome back to another month of Art Snacks Box Freestyle where we take the supplies from the October 2022 Art Snacks Plus Box, experiment with them to within an inch of their lives and then hopefully create a masterpiece for the hashtag Art Snacks Challenge. This month's fun fact is I have two middle names, Garrett and Luke, and a second part to that fun fact, most of the men in my family share the middle name Garrett, after my grandfather, Garrett. Obviously. <laughs> Let's get into the box and see what we have to play with today. Here is the October 2022 Art Snacks Plus box. Here's everything inside. Let's unwrap that little green burrito and take a closer look at what we'll be playing with today. In the Plus box, we have a Royal Talons Ecoline brush pen set of five. I have the red colorway here. We also have a Royal Talons Ecoline liquid watercolor paper pad, size nine by 12 inches. It's 290 GSM weight and there are 12 sheets. We'll be using two Royal Talons Ecoline Duo Tip Pens, which is an exclusive first look for art snacks. I have the colors light orange and blue violet. A Winsor & Newton Fine Liner Pen. Tombow Pastel Mono Graph Mechanical Pencil. This is size 0.5. And a Criticolor Kneadable Eraser. We have the sticker and the snack. Let's get everything set up to play and begin. As we get to testing all these art supplies, I've got the little art snacks menu cards here in my hand. I'm gonna read some of that information like we did last month and just compare and contrast some of it to my findings through the experimentation. Is uh, I kind of hype on about this all the time, but all these unique arrangements of art supplies, you know, different, uh, different types of supplies with different brands of supplies, they're all made differently and they all work differently with each other. So our aim is to kind of test everything out, see how we can uh, maximize the supplies for our Art Snacks Challenge. So I'm gonna let you know just how they fared up against their write-ups on the menu. <laughs> Plot twist, they all work That's the way they're supposed to. Um, but there are some bits of information that I thought I might share having uh, put them all to the test and maybe you can look for those things as you put them through their paces. Uh, let's start with the the Winsor & Newton Fine Liner. Fluidly capture your ideas with the Winsor & Newton Fine Liner, containing water resistant, brackets, not completely waterproof, and non-fading pigment ink. This pen fits every style of sketching. Its smoothly tapered nib is not only elegant, but also has consistent and reliable ink flow. And on this paper, yes, it is very consistent, very beautiful ink. It is sepia colored. I'm not sure if I mentioned that before, which I do prefer for line work. It's a bit of a softer effect than black. You'll see how I used a bit of a broken line work style towards the end of the video to get a bit of a softer effect with my line work. And I actually found on this paper that when I scrubbed it with the water on the paintbrush, it didn't move. So I'm gonna say for all intents and purposes on this paper, it was waterproof. Um, but yeah, again, different supplies with different brands. Maybe sometimes it's not really that waterproof, but on this one, I think you're pretty safe to uh, kind of attack it with water <laughs> once it's dried on the page. The next thing I tested was the mechanical pencil, the Tombow Pastel Monograph. I have a bunch of these. I actually really like the look of these pens. And you know, it was mentioned in the Winsor & Newton pen, sorry, pencil, pen, I'm gonna get them all confused. Uh, the aesthetic, the barrel, the tapered tip of that pen. If you're someone that really does appreciate, you know, an aesthetic looking art supply, then those are things to note, right? We live in an era where we share everything on social media. Some people really like to curate uh, their art supplies to kind of match their vibe. So if that's you, uh, that Winsor & Newton pen does have a pretty nice tapered barrel and it is very unique to the Winsor & Newton fine liners. So just something to note. But yes, I do like these mechanical pencils and they're quite, quite interesting with the shake kind of release lead thing going on. Let's read it. Shake up your sketches with the Tombow Monograph mechanical pencil. To extend the lead in this unique pencil, just jiggle it. Once you're done drawing, click the lock on the side to prevent accidental lead extension. This tool comes equipped with a twistable high performance eraser. So it does have that kind of unique lock feature. If you push up that little uh, pen, I don't know what you call those, like that pen, holder thing, the, the cap thing. I have no idea what it's called. The thing that you put in your pocket, <laughs> the clip, the pen clip. Yes, you can lock it that way and you can shake it to release more lead. I'm gonna say this I think is an HB, which is kind of a light hard lead. I usually, once they're all finished, like, and I'll go through a mechanical pencil pretty quickly. To be fair, I'm very heavy handed and I snap a lot of the lead. That's how I run through it so quickly. I love mechanical pencils, but I am I'm pretty heavy handed with them. I replace it with a B. If you've never tried B lead before, uh, it gives you a really nice range of tones for your grayscale. You can get 
that light effect that you get with the HB, but it is a bit softer, so you can actually get some darker, uh, some darker graphite a little bit easier. So I think a 2B is kind of my perfect thing, but if you want to get a refill for this, I would encourage you to try a B if you're looking to be a bit more adventurous with your pencils. So the next things we're going to look at are the Ecoline brush pens. I'm going to kind of lump these together because the I think the only difference between the set, the red set that I have, and then the two loose pens or like open stock pens are the fact that the tips are different. So the dual duo tip pens are an exclusive first look for Art Snacks. And this says here, meet the newest member of the Ecoline family, the duo tip. This double-ended marker features a slim bullet nib for fine lines and broad chisel tip for thick lines and shading large areas. It's filled with concentrated, transparent watercolor paint that can be combined with water for beautiful effects and smooth color transitions. Do you know what? I'm going to read the other one for the set as well, just in case there's something different. <laughs> These are the more classic uh, brush pens from Ecoline. Meet one of the most impressive brush pens around, the Royal Talons Ecoline Brush Pen. Full of liquid watercolor, this pen delivers brilliant transparent color that will liven up your artwork easily make precise lines or energetic strokes with its flexible yet sturdy nib. This set includes five different hues that go perfectly together. And that they did, and I think what you'll see most of my experimentation there was uh, activating them with water and also doing that tip to tip uh, kind of thing you can do with water based supplies. You can get them to bleed their ink into another art supply and then as you go to use it, it will self clean the tip and you'll get that gradient effect. That's always really fun to try. A lot of brush letters will do that and uh, and have a really nice gradient brush lettering thing going on, but it can be really effective for illustration if you have a specific use for that. I was also testing the kind of line weight that you could get with the different supplies and just how reactive they were. One thing I did notice was that once I had activated it with water and it had dried, it didn't really activate again. So it was kind of like, you know, activate it, and kind of commit to that and then it would layer back up on top of itself. That's something that is a bit more unique to these types of applications than say just using straight watercolor. If you do watercolor and then you activate it again, you can usually get it to scrub back to life and kind of push it around a lot. Once this is dry, it kind of dries as its own layer and then you're gonna layer over the top another transparent layer. So it's a pretty nice effect for that and, uh, and you can use that to good advantage when you wanna layer a lot of transparent layers on top of each other, which is what I end up going for. You'll see that I've already started my Art Snacks challenge piece. I'm gonna read a little bit more information on the I'm gonna read it on the kneadable eraser because I think that's the only one we missed other than the paper. The extra soft kneadable eraser from Creticolor won't wear down or leave residue behind. Use it to blot or wipe your surface without causing damage. It can be easily molded into any form for precision work. You know, that kneadable eraser almost picked up all of the graphite on that paper, which I'm not quite used to. Uh, such a clean pickup. Usually even the, the best I can try, I can still see the faintest outline of what I've drawn. And that's mostly because I'm heavy handed. But combined with this really light pencil and this paper, it lifted it like it was never there, which was pretty impressive. It is a bit of a soft and sticky kind of kneadable eraser. Uh, I mean, it could also be to do with weather. If you're kind of in a hot room, it might be a little bit more pliable, but it is uh, really, really effective. And yes, it can be molded to kind of give you a bit more precision work, which is good. I kind of like to use them more rounded so that I can press them in and almost feather out how I want to kind of pick up the lead. What I would usually use these for is when I want to say I've just colored in a large area and smudged it out with a blending stump, which I really wanted to use blending stumps in this piece, but I decided not to cheat because I can't really add supplies that we don't have. Even though I used a paintbrush, don't get too far into my logic there, but <laughs> I just thought I'm already using a paintbrush. I shouldn't bring in a needed, uh, sorry, a blending stump. But if we can get some tortillons, art snacks, if you're listening, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, kneaded erasers, that's how I usually use them. I will shade over a large area with graphite and I'll kind of lightly pounce it on top to kind of bring back highlights in a really soft uh, kind of gradient way. It's a very specific thing I'm talking about there, but that is, that's what I like to use and it does work really well. Let's talk about the paper because it is a really nice paper actually. This watercolor paper was made for your new Ecoline pens. That 
uh, the brilliant colors pop off the page and look their very best. With soft cold pressed texture, this surface is ideal for watercolor ink and water soluble markers. It can handle heavy layering thanks to its hefty 290 GSM weight. And I will say it did handle a lot of the light water applications that I used to complete my piece. And it is a really soft watercolor texture. I'm used to a bit more of a texture on my uh, cold pressed watercolor papers. But this was really, really nice. I do like this paper and it was bright white. I have a thing about bright white papers because I scan a lot of my work and it is just so much easier when the paper is not off white <laughs> to get all the color balance right when I go to clean it up in Photoshop. So I have a, I have a bit of a thing for this paper. It is really, really nice. I'm going to try and uh, get my hands on some more of it because I really did enjoy it. And let's start talking about the Art Snacks Challenge and some of the things that I learnt through my experimentation and how I applied that to the piece. The final piece, okay, for the Art Snacks Challenge, you might have seen a piece of paper on the desk earlier and it was the 2022 Art Snacks Ink Collection prompt list. I have decided to tackle a couple of problems in today's Art Snacks Challenge, which might be helpful for you if you are doing a prompts list this month, or any month really. I've done a bunch over a bunch of different years. Sometimes I'm all about the challenges, sometimes I'm really not. <laughs> this month I really am again, so it's great. Um, but if you don't have the time to do 31 pieces, or you feel like that's a lot, or if you're someone that looks at the prompt and you feel like you know, prompts are great. They're supposed to prompt us to do something, but sometimes they can prompt us to think we have actually no good ideas and then they become really intimidating again. I've, I've, I think this will be a great solution for you. I just want you to grab a piece of paper, preferably some of this good paper, <laughs> and sketch out a really simple base character. Just, just the head, the body, and I want you to put it in costume, a Halloween costume that are all the prompts from that prompts list. And you don't have to do all at once, obviously. I have actually come up with eight. I think eight is a good way to tackle the whole month because at the end of it, you'll have four different illustrations that have all 31 prompts in there. So eight of the prompts are on here. See if you can guess which ones they are. <laughs> and you, you would have four pieces. The first, you know, if you did them week by week, week one, you'd have eight prompts in one piece. Week two, you'd have eight. Three, you'd have eight. And in the fourth week, there'd be seven prompts left. So that one would have seven, but it would be all 31 present and accounted for. And I think not only would it be a great way to kind of streamline that process if you couldn't commit to 31 pieces, I think actually just combining all of those prompts into one makes for a really interesting piece. Therefore, you don't have to have a really interesting idea. <laughs> just trying to fit all the prompts together as I went uh, just made it look interesting. I mean, there were there are a whole bunch of things I wouldn't have put together and certainly wouldn't have put together in this way just from the top of my head. So I found a way to do the prompts, you know, at a really surface level, like a really basic level, but just you know, kind of collaging them all together as a Halloween outfit seemed to really work. And then I used some of that experimentation that I learned earlier in the video to finish the whole piece. And some of those things that I applied were the broken line work. So I used the sepia pen to do a really nice line work so that everything would be a bit more bold. And I decided to contrast that with a really soft shaded graphite face, just so that I could really differentiate between the character underneath that really really kind of layered and interesting costume. I then used the Ecoline watercolors to draw a palette off to the side and use a paintbrush with water to act as a, a paint palette. I just dipped it in there and layered all the transparent layers on top of each other for a really mottled autumnal look. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you're gonna kind of combine some prompts together to have a go at this and uh, show me if you do. There we go, that's it for this month. I hope you enjoyed watching that video. If you would like to join Art Snacks, you can do so using the code JAMES10 for 10% off at checkout. And please don't forget to share your work with this in the mixed community and on social media with the hashtag Art Snacks Challenge. Until next time, have a great, happy Halloween. I'll see you then. Bye.